Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a community came together to remember the life of a local judge who was killed last week. And a new report shows Kentucky has some of the deadliest roads in the country. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. We're coming up on 5 o'clock this Monday morning. Today is September 23rd. Let's send it over to meteorologist Mace Michaels for a look at your forecast. Good morning, Madison. We are looking at warm temperatures this morning and some raindrops in the area as well. A look at Moorhead where some showers are passing by at 68. You can notice I-64 there kind of glistening a little bit in some of the lights. That's because, of course, there's been some showers falling through. And we have a couple of sprinkles and isolated showers here around the hazard area as well. Had some foggy patches earlier on. We will have that in areas this morning, too. Our temperatures are in the mid-60s. When you look at visibility, Harlan is down to around a mile. Jonesville is under a mile, even near zero now. And Williamsburg near a one-mile visibility. So watch out for patchy fog along with some of the pockets of rain. 60s for our temperatures this morning and even Prestonsburg and Pikeville are starting as warm as 70 and Monticello at 72. Here's some of those showers roaming through the area from Moorhead over to Louisa north of Paintsville and a couple of showers here in and around the hazard area. Moving off to the east at about 20 miles an hour so just a passing shower or two this morning. We may have a few more for later this afternoon as highs climb up into the low 80s. Full forecast for the week ahead looks wet. More on that coming up, Madison. All right, Mace, thank you. Yesterday, hundreds of people continued to pay respects to Judge Kevin Mullins, who was shot and killed on Thursday. WYMT's RJ Johnson shares how his longtime friend is remembering him. It was a somber afternoon as folks gathered at Jenkins High School to remember Letcher County District Judge Kevin Mullins. He was shot and killed on Thursday at the Letcher County Courthouse. Garnered Kinser Jr. says not only was Mullins dedicated to his job, but he was also a great person. Especially in the drug rehab program. But personally, he was a wonderful friend, and there was no boundaries for what he wouldn't do for me. He says he was shocked when he heard the news of Mullins' passing. Puzzled as to what could create something like this, and tragic. I wouldn't have imagined that he would have ever been in a situation like that. But of course, all judges and all people in the, in the judicial system face that possibility every day. Kinzer says there has been a lot of negative attention on the community. People have thoughts about this area anyway, and this has sort of drawn attention to that. And it's been a, like a big cloud, dark cloud over us that we, that we don't deserve. Saying with limited details as to what led to the shooting, Kinsler says he is waiting to see it play out in court. As far as the cause and all of that, I'm going to leave that up to. We have a great judicial system in the state of Kentucky. We've got a great governor. We've got a great attorney general. And we've got a great judicial office in Ledger County. Mullins died at the age of 54. In Jenkins, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Judge Mullen's death is still under investigation, but a preliminary investigation from Kentucky State Police indicates he was shot following an argument with Letcher County Sheriff Mickey Steins. Steins has since been charged with Mullins' murder. Kentucky courts are still looking for a judge who can hear the case as arraignments were normally heard by the victim, Judge Mullins. Commonwealth's attorney Jackie Steele says the arraignment will be at 11 on Wednesday morning in Carter County. The Letcher County community came together for a first step at healing after the shooting on Thursday. Members of the Graham Memorial Presbyterian Church say the best way to heal is to come together in prayer. Dozens of folks in the community gathered in front of the Letcher County Courthouse to pray for the healing of those impacted by the shooting. I just want to help everyone in this community be able to heal be able to love, be able to care for each other, because that's what we are. We're a community of caring. 
folks in attendance say in times of hardship, people must lean on each other for support. A man is accused of shooting his mother and grandmother in Wayne County. Kentucky State Police were called around 11 on Saturday night because of reported shots fired on Winchester Road. Police say 25 year old Chase Jackson was in a verbal fight with his mother, Audrey Jackson, and his grandmother, Savannah Brock. Chase reportedly fired a gun and shot both of the women. They were airlifted to the hospital. Jackson was taken to the Wayne County Detention Center and charged with attempted murder and first degree assault. Friday, the Kentucky State Police confirmed the body found in Laurel County was the suspected I-75 shooter Joseph Couch. The state's chief medical examiner says the body was positively identified through DNA extracted from the bone. The medical examiner says the body was badly decomposed and his cause of death is believed to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The search for Couch lasted 12 days after police say he fired shots on I-75, injuring five people. And during the weekend, part of the Daniel Boone National Forest was reopened after being shut down during the search for Joseph Couch. Officials with the U.S. Forest Service closed several parts of the Sheltoe Trace on September 10th as law enforcement searched the area. The trail reopened on Friday, two days after Couch's body was found. A new study shows Kentucky has some of the deadliest highways in the country. The Bluegrass State ranks second, only behind South Carolina. The study from Suzuki Law Offices shows Kentucky had around 12 crashes per billion vehicle miles. In 2022, the state recorded a total of 593 deadly crashes. Kane Run Road in Louisville is one of the most dangerous stretches. The other deadliest road is Kentucky Route 11, which runs north to south in this part of the state. Friday, Governor Andy Bashir called on Representative Daniel Grossberg to resign. Grossberg has been in the spotlight for a couple of months now after a wide range of scathing allegations were made against him, including inappropriate behavior toward fellow staffers and legislators and an reported shady business deal with a car dealer. On Friday, the Lexington Herald Leader published a new story claiming that Grossberg was banned from the Louisville Strip Club for inappropriately touching exotic dancers and offering one of them $5,000 to have sex with him. In a quickly arranged news conference on Friday, Governor Bashir said enough is enough. From an individual here at the Capitol, that um, felt unsafe uh, to others at political events that have felt unsafe to, to, to the article today. Uh, you cannot be a state representative and engage in this type of conduct, but no human being should make other people feel uh, unsafe. You know, harassment is wrong in all of its forms. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman, Congressman Morgan McGarvey, and the chair of the Louisville Democratic Party also released statements calling for Grossberg's resignation. As hunting season gets started, state fish and wildlife leaders are asking for help tracking a disease found in deer. They're looking to learn more about chronic wasting disease. It's a deadly brain disease found in deer and other animals. Kentucky's first case was found last year in Ballard County. Officials are asking hunters to bring the heads of harvested deer to new sample collection sites to be studied. We're doing this um, statewide, right? Just because there's not as much risk in one place as there is you know, down here doesn't mean we shouldn't be looking. We need to do our good statewide surveillance and make sure that um, if we do detect a disease that we're finding it early so we can do something about it. There are 50 collection sites across the state. You can find the locations on the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife's website. Thanks for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Still to come, the United States is once again facing a deadline to find funding while lawmakers on both sides hash it out. Clouds and showers pushing through the area. We'll look at how wet it may be the next several days coming up.